And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us on the line. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Um, Have you had a good weekend? I did. Yourself? Yeah. Always, uh, <laughs> it was very, uh, the weather was really nice this weekend, actually. It wasn't right, too hot. <laughs> there was a little bit of wet rain that was welcome. Not like huge. Yeah. Huge uh, pouring of showers, but yeah. uh, a little refreshing drizzle, <laughs> which was uh, always welcome. So, We're yeah. expecting more drizzle today. And thankfully, if that does anything for us positives, it allows us to take a beat from the heat. And that's kind of Ooh. what we we're looking for. Do you like that rhyme, I rhymed? <laughs> <laughs> it's completely inadvertent, too. It's kind of embarrassing. So let's get started. Um, <laughs> As always, we're going to try to simplify some of these major headlines for our listeners, starting with our COVID-19 coverage. So unfortunately, pleasant weather means people travel more. It's the summer season, too. It is resulting in us to talk a little bit more about in detail what the COVID-19 protocol will be. This is our first keyword of the day. Fourth shot. So Korea's new coronavirus cases stayed above 40,000 over the weekend, fueled by the new Omicron subvariant. So what's the latest? Yeah, so yesterday's caseload was slightly below the previous Sunday's uh, tally, but still remained over 40,000. Um, as of 9 p.m. on Sunday, there were just over 25,000 infections. So we could see a slightly lower uh, margin when it comes to the uh, the figure that's reported today. Mm. Um, that's, uh, But still, that is double what was tallied during the same period a week earlier. We keep having this... Uh, kind of trend where the figures are double from yeah. the previous week or two weeks, um, kind of was being dubbed as a, a doubling effect mm. uh, recently. Um, also, meanwhile, 14 new deaths were also reported yesterday. So the death toll, additional death toll remains in the double digits. Uh, the number of critically ill patients was 71 as well. That's up from 70 the previous uh, day. Now, the government is expanding Eligibility for a fourth COVID-19 vaccine shot to people aged 50 and older, uh, as well as people aged 18 and older, so basically all adults who have underlying health conditions. Um, it, that's uh, the for the senior citizens, they lowered the age requirements by 10 years. Uh -huh. It was uh, 60 and older. Right. Um, and all this is happening from today, so more vaccines for that expanded group will be available from today uh, by the end of this month uh, which uh, is about a couple of weeks left mm -hmm. the government plans to expand the number of what's being known as one-stop COVID-19 treatment centers that's going to be increased to 10,000 from the current uh, 6,300 or so mm -hmm. um, these places are where people can take virus tests get in-person medical care services uh, and receive antiviral drugs as well. So that's mm. why it's called a one-stop place. Right. Uh, if we remember back in the peak of the pandemic, we had separate testing sites, mm. and then we had designated uh, hospitals right. that treated COVID-19 patients. Now it's pretty much expanded to your local clinic. So um, an easy walk-in uh, facility where you can get tested and treated at the same time. Um, as of yet, the nation's medical system is currently able to handle severe cases and pretty much most of the uh, uptick in infections, especially with the expansion of these local clinics also dealing with COVID-19 patients as well. Um, but the hospital occupancy rate is on a steep upward trend uh, and again, almost doubling in the space of two weeks uh, mm. uh, in the space of two weeks. So again, in terms of hospital occupancy rate, so there's a doubling effect there as well. But mm. uh, uh, it seems at the moment anyway, the country is well prepared for an uptick in cases. All right, let's turn our attention to our economy section. This is our second keyword of the day. Inflation. So consumers are continuing to rise and this is leading, uh, consumer prices are continuing to rise and this is leading to the cost of dining out getting even more expensive. In fact, I went out to just get grilled meat. It was a regular weekend and I noticed my bill was just a tad bit more expensive. What's the latest? <laughs> I know. I mean, uh, a lot of Koreans dine out, um, usually in the Western countries or in the UK, where I'm from. A sign of a kind of a, a kind of a slowing economy is when yeah. you see less people dining out. In mm. Korea, th that phenomenon doesn't really uh, apply that much when compared to the UK. But I think it is a, a kind of a, 
a kind of a trend that we could be seeing, especially with these rising food prices. Mm. Um, and according to the Korean Statistical Information Service, restaurant purchases increased uh, 6.7% on year in the first six months of the year. Now, one of the most popular menu items, you mentioned a grilled meat, pork belly, or samgyeopsal, as it's known in Korea, that was up by more than 7% in terms of prices. Uh, beef, already a, a pretty much expensive <laughs> uh, meat, uh, is, was up more than 8% uh, at these uh, barbecue or grilled restaurants. Uh, the price of uh, everyone's favorite uh, menu, fried chicken, rose nearly 9%. Uh, the kind of Korean Chinese noodle, jajangmyeon, Um, this black bean noodle Mm. and kimbap as well uh, went up by Mm -hmm. Uh, 9.1%. Samgyetang, which a lot of people, I presume, ate on Saturday because it was chobok, which uh, basically means it's one of three days or known as uh, three dog days, known as signaling the kind of the hottest days of the year. Uh, This is basically a ginseng chicken soup and also naengmyeon, which is a popular summer dish as well, these cold buck noodles, they rose 4.4% and 7.6% respectively. Mm. So pretty much on the whole, uh, <laughs> all Korean popular dishes went up in price. There and is no yes, silver went, lining. <laughs> I know, there's no silver lining. I went out to eat, uh, well, I do eat out most of the time and uh, over the weekend as well. Yeah, I did, definitely did feel the feel the pain of the bill when I, I got it uh, and uh, yeah it kind of makes you shake your hand when you're <laughs> handing out your credit card to the counter um, now where restaurants have not raised prices mm. uh, they are trying to control their portions by making them a bit smaller mm. uh, this kind of bit this phenomenon has been known as kind of a shrinkflation is right. kind of the word that's being used right. uh, in that certain uh, instances Now, eyes are on, uh, most importantly, when this rising inflation will start to die down. Uh, The government and Bank of Korea hope the peak will come in the fall, which uh, is kind of a few months away. Finance Minister Chu Gyeong Ho, for one, believes food prices, anyway, will stabilise from October. The Bank of Korea chief, Lee Chang-yong, predicts the cool-down in overall inflation at the end of Q3, the third quarter, or the beginning Uh, of the fourth quarter, but Mm. we'll have to remain and see, of course, especially with the recent rise in inflation, Mm. a lot of the reasons are from uh, reasons that are out of the control Mm. of the Korean government, Uh, Mm. a lot of geopolitical and external factors in play. Mm. So we'll have to see how that plays out as well. All right, let's turn our attention to our next keyword of the day. Owning real estate is mighty expensive in the city of Seoul, but should uh, these lower-priced homeowners get a break? Brings us to our third keyword of the day. Fixed rates borrowing. So the government and the ruling party have agreed to allow low-priced homeowners, at least, to replace their floating rate-based borrowing with fixed ones instead. What does this exactly mean? Right. So this is all basically part of efforts to help, of course, ease these homeowners' financial burden amid uh, fast rising borrowing costs. Uh, That's led by the central bank's recent swift and sharp rate hikes, including the big move, the half a percentage point rise. Uh, Now, the government and the People Party, they agreed to allow people owning homes valued uh, below 400 million won to replace their borrowing based on floating rates with fixed ones starting in September. So basically uh, meaning that there will be changed to rates that aren't really affected by the rising or changing interest rates. Now, the PPP proposed around 4% as a fixed interest rate, as an option for those homeowners. Mm. But the details, such as the home price ceiling for determining the change in borrowing arrangements, they still need to be discussed within the government. Now, many home, bo- uh, home buyers had taken out loans on a floating rate borrowing arrangement. This is because lending rates had actually been uh, quite low, uh, especially during the pandemic uh, mm-hmm. era, um, of which we are still in pretty much at the moment, <laughs> though. Uh, now, the BOK is aggressive monetary tightening, of course, uh, rising interest rates, not just in Korea, but around the world. Uh, they've raised their interest rate paying burden faster than those who borrowed money on fixed rates. Um, Also, uh, it's uh, discussed issues related to recent financial market conditions, and uh, they share the view that it is necessary to push for a currency swap deal uh, or a channel with the United States as well. There have been increasing calls for that because 
Korean won uh, keeps falling in value. Mm. Uh, speculations have arisen that the two countries actually could discuss the reopening of a currency swap line, which has uh, expired. That's because U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will be visiting Korea um, this week. So that's another area uh, that could be up for discussion. But of course, the real estate issue has been a long Uh, pro- a long-standing problem in Korea, um, mm. not just for this administration, for the previous one and previous ones before that as well. So mm. uh, we'll have to see if this fixed rate, uh, if it does come into fruition, does help uh, lessen the burden for especially the low, uh, lower-valued homeowners. Mm. Um, but uh, of course, we'll have to see how that plays out. If there's a general consensus, I mean, not to oversimplify, but just for context, I mean, if there needs to be policies implemented, they need to target specific groups as opposed to one all-encompassing one that has never worked in the past. Like you said, we'll have to wait and see how these moves help alleviate the already very heated uh, housing market. Let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Korea-Japan diplomacy. So Foreign Minister Park Jin will make a three-day trip to Japan from today in hopes of improving ties with Tokyo. What can we expect out of this trip? Yeah, so we've had a noticeable kind of effort or um, or more efforts from the new administration of trying to improve relations with Japan. Uh, This uh, kind of gained steam after the assassination of the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Uh, And this would be the uh, foreign minister's first official trip to Japan under the Yoon government. And the meeting of Korean and Japanese foreign ministers uh, in general will also be the first since December 2017. So it's been a while since we had that kind of high level meeting between the two nations. Mm. Um, Now, Pag is expected to discuss a series of contentious issues with his Japanese counterpart, Yoshimasa Hayashi. These include areas of Uh, bilateral relations and, of course, uh, North Korea will also likely be on the agenda as well. Mm. Uh, Now, the topic of settling the row over compensating Korean victims of Japan's forced labor could uh, also be discussed. Um, Korea's Supreme Court is actually expected to issue a final verdict uh, either next month or in September on whether to allow the liquidation of assets held by two Japanese companies. Um, Now, the foreign uh, minister's could also exchange views on the Japanese ruling bloc's push for a controversial revision to the pacifist constitution there. Mm. It is a highly sensitive subject matter for Koreans, which uh, had apparently gained political momentum after uh, Abe's uh, assassination. Now, other topics on the table could include, of course, the issue of sexual slavery and the territorial dispute over the Tokto Islands as well. Mm. All of these, of course, are very sensitive and contentious issues between Mm. the two nations. Um, Now, the ministers may also discuss holding the first bilateral summits of the leaders of Korea and Japan. Uh, It hasn't quite, it hasn't, they've met before, but it wasn't an official summit. They kind of basically crossed paths Mm. during the NATO summit. Mm. Um, Now, after their meeting today, the top diplomats are set to, Uh, attend a banquet afterwards, uh, and Park is also expected to pay tribute to Abe uh, during a memorial as well. All right, and on to our final keyword of the day. Constitutional revision. So National Assembly Speaker Kim Jin-pyo has proposed seeking a revision of the Constitution. Run us through what he has said so far. Right, so he stressed the need for a constitution, in his words, that works to unite the energy of the people and opens the door for the future of the nation. And he made the proposal yesterday at the National Assembly uh, during his congratulatory speech for a ceremony marking the 74th anniversary of Constitution Day. Uh, Kim said that the society has had many discussions concerning the revision of the constitution, And he added there is a broad public consensus on the matter as well, saying now is the time to act. And he said the nation needs a bigger vessel to accommodate the high expectations of the people and the rapid changes of the era. So he's basically saying that the current constitution is kind of outdated. Mm. Uh, And he also stressed the nation should move toward the path of power dispersion and cooperation, basically saying that one person shouldn't be holding all the power and uh, that it should be dispersed. Um, And now the Speaker also urged rival parties to probably work towards negotiating on forming the new legislative leadership to ensure possible legislative uh, fixes. That's probably the most urgent and pressing issue at the moment, but that's because rival parties remain in deadlock Mm. over naming new committee chairs of the National Assembly. And this meant that they failed again 
to stick to their self-imposed deadline of returning to work by Constitution Day, which was yesterday. Um, They are still fighting over which party would chair, especially the Science, ICT, Broadcasting and Communications Committee, as well as Public Administration and Security Committee as well. Now, President uh, Yoon sung Yo, excuse me, meanwhile on social media, uh, renewed his commitment to uh, promote the constitutional values of free democracy, uh, human rights and rule of law. That um, mm. came through uh, a Facebook post. Thank you so much, Aram, for a thorough coverage this morning. Have a safe day and we'll speak to you again tomorrow. You too. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.